Hey, what's up guys? Just a real quick video. Sony just announced the all new A7 III and I gotta tell you, it looks like they just laid the spec down on Canon, Nikon and every other camera manufacturer out there. For those of you who have not heard about the A7 III, I don't know what you're watching because it's all over YouTube, but this camera has got 24 megapixels, 15 stops at dynamic range, 5 axis in body stabilization, 693 phase detection AF points, IAF 10 frames a second, 4K, 710 shot battery life, and I don't remember what the ISO is off the top of my head, but it's ridiculous. So all of that comes in at only $2,000. Yeah, you heard that right. It's cheaper than just about any other full frame camera out there. I think the 6D Mark II is cheaper than that. But it is a bargain price. Sony's calling it its basic camera, but this basic camera is blowing everybody else out of the water. Now, I know right now the initial reviews are basically Sony fanboys, so of course they're gonna say it's great. But on a spec sheet, it looks great. I am actually shooting this video right now with the Sony A7R 3 which I rented. And I'll be honest with you, I wanted to hate this camera. I wanted to find flaws with this camera. And don't get me wrong, it does have a couple of shortcomings and limitations for certain types of shooting. But it's an awesome camera for shooting portraits and, you know, events, weddings, that kind of thing. This thing's awesome. It dominates anything I have ever shot with. And I am strongly considering switching to Sony. Now, there are, like I said, limitations. I can't really do my sports shooting because they don't have native lenses that are very long with the Sony E-mount and adapted lenses in my experience have sucked. Uh, also, I don't like the wireless transfer with the Sony Play Memories app. You have certain compatibility issues with programs like Darkroom. My understanding is it does not support Sony right now. So there are certain types of shooting where Sony just isn't quite there yet. But for portraits, weddings, you know, for the most part events, if you're not having to do wireless transfers or using specific types of software, this camera blows everything out of the water, and I wanted to hate it. I have sat here for the last four days trying to find things wrong with the Sony a7R 3 and I just keep getting amazed at things that I didn't even know that the camera was capable of doing. And now the a7 is basically almost the same camera as the a9 and the a7R 3 just anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500 less expensive. At $2,000, that is such a great price for a full-frame camera with the capabilities that the a7 III has. I think it will go on to be the best-selling full-frame camera, not only in Sony's history, but I think it might out outdo some of Canon's uh, full-frame cameras just because it is so incredibly cheap. Canon's really got to step their game up at this point. The 5D Mark IV was a disappointment for a lot of people. I felt that it was a good camera, you know, it wasn't the huge step forward like a lot of us were hoping for, but Sony's putting those huge steps forward into these cameras. And right now, I don't think that there is a Canon camera that can compete with a Sony camera in terms of image quality, dynamic range, all of the feature set. While there are still some holdbacks with Sony, I admit that, overall camera performance I haven't used anything from Canon that comes even close. So I think Canon probably has a lot more technology than they're releasing. I think Canon likes to do incremental upgrades so that they can make more money by releasing more camera bodies. But Canon, it's time for you to take a major step forward because I am seriously considering jumping ship to Sony right now. And I'm not the only one. Obviously, if you look around on YouTube, everybody has talked about the A9, the A7R 3 and how great a cameras they are it's time for Canon to really take a step forward. Now that's not to say that your old Canon cameras can't take great pictures. My 5D Mark III is still my workhorse and it's old technology even by Canon standards. But these cameras are just so much better than anything I've shot with Canon. And I just can't say enough about them. And now that they're coming in with a bargain price of just $2,000 for the a7 III, Let's see what happens. Let's see what Canon's response is, and it needs to be huge. Or else I think they are going to lose a tremendous amount of their market share. Is Canon going to go bankrupt over this? No, Canon's got too much brand recognition. People will still buy Canon because that's the big brand. It's just the reality of it. But I think that we might start seeing Sony completely dominate 
the market if Canon doesn't do anything. I believe Sony's already passed Nikon, so I'm not even including Nikon in this discussion. It's just, this is an awesome, the a7R 3 is an awesome camera. The a7 III is basically supposed to be a little bit of a dumbed down version. I think it even has better ISO performance than the a7R 3 And I saw a video, I was a little bit confused, it was by Kai, and the, he was talking to a guy, and apparently Sony's released a flash that now can keep up with that camera and fire off 10 frames a second with that flash, that the flash will actually be able to recycle that fast. If I understood the brief conversation in the video, which would be another huge step forward and something awesome because otherwise you are looking at very expensive uh, flash setups that can keep up with a 10 frame per second recycle time. And in my knowledge, I'm not aware of any on-camera flash that can do that. They're all, you know, large studio type strobes. So if I understood that video correctly of what Kai was saying in that video, that's another awesome thing, whether you're shooting weddings or anything where you need flash, to be able to have that kind of recycle time in a handheld on-camera flash would be awesome. So anyways, like I said, it was just a quick video. I want to hate on Sony, but I can't do it. I got to be honest with you guys. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll have a full review on this A7R 3 and the handful of problems that I found with it, but they are not very many because most of the things with this camera... I've actually been surprised with it because there are things that it does that I just didn't think a camera could do. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.